the legal institutional framework, um, licensing of uh, dealers in foreign currency, um, actually regulated by law. Uh, we are specifically under Regulation 2 of the Exchange Control Regulations. Um, it's important because foreign currency is, is one of the strategic resources for any country. Uh, you want to import goods, uh, we will not pay with our Namibian dollars, we have to convert to US dollar, to Euro, so on. If you want to go outside the country, you have to convert Namibian dollars to the US dollar, the international uh, currencies. So the regulations issued under the Currency and Exchanges Act uh, empower the Minister of Finance to regulate and administer exchange control in Namibia. The Minister, in terms of the same regulations, has delegated some powers <coughs> to the uh, board. So we actually administer exchange control on behalf of the Minister of Finance. All foreign exchange transactions are conducted through authorized dealers, and authorized dealers in foreign exchange with limited authorities. So the authorized dealers are your commercial banks. And then we have authorized dealers in foreign exchange with limited authority. Um, that is the lighter version of what the commercial banks do. Uh, traditionally, historically, uh, this space um, resorts under the commercial banks. A few years ago, I thought that we need to break it up and allow entrepreneurs like yourself to actually enter the space. And that's why we created um, the, what, we, what is known as the Bureau of the Change. You, you see them around uh, town. The, Authorized dealers and actors are issued with operation manuals for daily administration of foreign exchange transactions. So, if you want to do forex, you go to uh, these entities and we have a set of rules that um, governs what we can do as Namibians want to pay for imports, you want to travel. Uh, all that is meant to uh, protect the foreign currency. We want to ensure that there is liquidity of the foreign currency in the market. Exchange controls in the CMA are aligned in terms of the multilateral monetary agreement. So CMA consisting of South Africa, Swatini, Lesotho, and ourselves. Uh, you know we have uh, this arrangement. And that's why our Namibian dollar is pegged to the rand one-on-one. -on -one. So that also applies to uh, the exchange controls. So the licensing requirements in terms of the other licensing policy that was approved by the Minister, issued under Regulation 2, um, as I said, uh, it was thought that we need to uh, bring it down and, and provide uh, streamlined uh, rules and regulations for the ADLA specifically to allow uh, uh, new participants to enter the market. It should be a registered private limited company, really first exclusively to transact in foreign exchange. So the first thing is that you go to PIPA, uh, you register the entity that you want to um, use to do forex. And then the licensing requirements, these are very uh, important to us, business and property of shareholders. I think somebody earlier made a comment that Scared, and we all know all sorts of people are taking advantage. Uh, we need a uh, police clearance certificate, um, then good standing certificates, tax issued by number. So, we want to look at the, um, the integrity, the profile of the uh, prospective shareholder, and then uh, financial statements, the ability to finance the other. So hold a questionnaire, uh, so to ask you a number of questions. Basically, 
uh, giving us a detailed profile of who you are. Uh, so these are the issues that speak to fitness and profit of the potential shareholders. And then operational uh, requirements for licensing of the Atlas. This year now speaking specifically to the Atlas, the smaller or lighter version of, of the base. Uh, you need a startup capital of 1.6 million. And um, you would agree with me that that is a reasonable ask. Because, uh, oh, it's, it's too much. <laughs> But then there are costs. Uh, I mean, if you were to start a bank, it's a different thing. But these, there are some costs you have to incur. And uh, you have to put some systems and uh, software. And, uh, and, uh, so, all those, uh, we just want some comfort that you, before we license you, you have the financial muscles to actually uh, get this thing running and make success of it. And uh, part of that, the second point there is the reporting system. You know, data collection uh, is a very important activity for us as a central bank. So all cross-border flows in and out of the country, there is a requirement that you have to transmit that information electronically to us uh, because uh, data uh, is, is very important for decision making uh, for the authorities to understand what is happening, who are we treating with, what funds are going out of the country, for what purpose. So the reporting system is uh, one of the main uh, cost component. That, that's why we're asking the one to six million. And then of course uh, business plan you tell us um, your idea, you, you just explain to us. And then compliance with uh, the Financial uh, Intelligence Act. So you also need to give us comfort that you, you will comply. And then, um, talking about the authorized dealers, which I said is the commercial banks. Uh, traditionally, they are the ones that have been uh, dealing in foreign currency. So for our, from, from our side, we require that it should be a fully licensed bank. Uh, my colleague, who went and spoke to that. And then, um, uh, reporting system, uh, as, as I said, that uh, the UGDF reporting system to actually transmit all transactions to the bank uh, electronically. And then the, the fitness of property here, we, we just rely on what the bank's permission would, uh, would have done, so we, we don't uh, duplicate. So the approval process. Uh, finally, the ultimate power to approve, as I said, are vested for the Minister of, of Finance. So what we do uh, as a delegated authority, we do assess the applications best based on those set requirements I referred to. Once we are satisfied that all the requirements have been met, we make a recommendation to the Minister. Uh, the Minister will grant a provisional approval. Uh, once we have that provision approval, we now engage you, the applicant, to uh, actually uh, put the systems and uh, all the processes in place in readiness to commence business. For that, we'll give you six months. Um, so you can do it uh, in two weeks after the approval, or give you time to put all the uh, systems in place. And then we have a pre-opening inspection. Uh, basically, here we will test particularly the system. That the system we have put in place is compatible with our uh, system here, and you are able to as uh, prescribed. And then once you are satisfied, you are issued with the license, and now you are ready to fly. So basically, that's my short presentation. Thank you very much.